how to fire a much finer beam of particles to polish glass perfectly. Kecks are the first telescope mirrors to be polished this way. It takes a week to polish each segment. That's 72 weeks for both the Keck mirrors. But even Keck's perfect twin mirrors can't see everything in the night sky. Vast swirling clouds of cosmic debris are completely impenetrable. So how does a Korean War spy plane help astronomers devise a new way of sensing? The Keck Observatory can see more of the cosmos than any other telescope on Earth. It can see an almost unlimited number of objects in the sky. Sheer power finds stars too dim to see with the naked eye. But vast galaxies also hide behind clouds of dust and gas. And to see them requires a new way of sensing. Nineteen fifty three, the Korean War. American commanders want to stop trains supplying the enemy North Korean lines. By day, the bombers can see their targets. But by night, it's a different story. They fly blind. Then comes a major breakthrough. Military engineers devise a way of literally seeing in the dark. They mount a revolutionary camera on a plane. It senses infrared radiation given off by hot objects, like locomotives. Targets are once again as clear as day. This new way of sensing in pitch blackness or through smoke and dust is called thermal imaging. Today, search and rescue teams also adopt the exact same technology. I want to put it to the test. And I come to the Honolulu Fire Department to do so. Captain Alan Carvalho shows me where they practice. The thermal imaging helps us tremendously in a smoke field environment to be able to, for us to locate victims, see obstacles that may be involved. So it's, it's a pretty essential tool for you, and I guess the difference is enormous. Definitely, enormous difference between having a thermal imager and not having it when we're doing a search. They're going to show me thermal imaging in action. First, I'm going to find a victim without thermal imaging. Meet Rescue Randy. I won't know where he is. I'm going to experience what firefighters routinely face in reality. Only it's usually a bit hotter for them. I'm going to give you some equipment, some knee pads and gloves, and see if you can find Rescue Randy within five minutes. Shut off the lights, Dean. Room number 13. There you go. A standard firefighter's torch doesn't make any difference in these conditions. Fire Chief Allen uses his own thermal imaging camera to monitor my progress. Right, the drill is you feel it. Ow! The wall, I found the wall! There's a wall in here! I'm completely and utterly disorientated. Uh, oh, yeah, yes. That's the. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Ah! Is this somebody who needs my help? No, it's it's uh, it's a thing. You, you can stay there. Well, I'm using all of my senses. Mostly, it must be said, touch and sight, and they're not helping. I need another sense. Was that the way I came in?
I don't even make it out of the first room by the time the five minutes are up. Rescue Randy would have been toast. Now I'm going to try again, this time with the thermal imaging camera. First, the officers place Randy in the sun so he'll warm nicely. He'll emit plenty of infrared, which will show up on the thermal imaging. Now we're going to let you use our thermal imager, and you let me know how, how well it goes, OK? OK. So here it is. We've rearranged the room. We have our same safety personnel set up in there. I want you to go and scan the room, see if you can find Rescue Randy a little quicker this time, OK? It's just so disorientating. Yeah. Let's see how well this works right. for you. Thank you. Lights out. Uh, that's a dark again. It's not going any brighter. Right. Uh, OK, well, before I do anything, armed with my camera, I'm going to scan around the room. Oh, now, that's, that's a safety person there. Hello, safety person. They didn't know there were, there were people everywhere watching me. Even furniture emits infrared radiation and shows up clearly. Straight away. No, there's nobody else. There's no, no victim in here. So I can move through, feeling my way, as before, into the other room, which is here. Right. Scan. Nobody there. Nope. Ah! There. That took a fraction of the time. There's no crawling around the walls to find by touch. This gave me another sense. A thermal sense. The exact same technology that helps American pilots to pinpoint North Korean locomotives on the blackest of nights now allows firefighters to see through smoke. And 55 years later, thermal imaging also shows astronomers objects trillions of miles away, hidden behind cosmic dust. Keck's thermal imaging is so sensitive, it can detect a candle flame on the moon. And it can sense the infrared radiation from remote galaxies other observatories only dream about. But there is still one more problem for the Keck designers caused by a star much closer to Earth. Every day, that particular star that we call the Sun does its work to warm Hawaii and turn it into a tropical paradise. And every night, as the Sun sets, paradise cools down. Daily warming and cooling is hell for astronomers because their instruments expand and contract, which distorts the images. So what's the solution got to do with 19th century Florida and a killer lurking in her steamy swamps? Even on the icy summit of Mauna Kea, the tropical sun can raise the temperature well above freezing during the day. Keck's mirrors would expand and contract with the daily warming and cooling. The tiniest changes to the mirror would distort the images. Engineers need to find a way to stop it warming and cooling. And that brings us neatly to our final connection. Rewind to the 1840s. Florida's swamps are home to a formidable predator. Not that but this, the mosquito. It carries deadly yellow fever. Physician John Gorry notices that the lethal disease erupts mostly in summer, so he wrongly assumes warm temperatures are directly to blame. He sets out to make this machine to cool rooms using a simple principle. When a gas expands, it cools down chilling everything around it, as Dr. Chris Hill, who knows all about thermodynamics, reveals. This is a can of uh, ordinary deodorant, which is a gas under pressure. Go ahead and spray it on your finger and tell me what you feel. What are you trying to tell me? Okay, right, so just spray it. 
just like that. What does it feel like? Uh, cold, actually. It's colder because um, the gas is expanding from a, lo a 